Crocobrachialis, Brachialis, Brachioidialis. They are confusing muscles. How do you sort them out? What is the origin? What is the insertion? What is the innervation? And what is the function of each muscle? And what is the important anatomic feature for each one of them? So let's start with the cracobrachialis, then the brachialis, then the last thing is the radius, so it will be brachioridialis. The way I will present it will start from proximal to distal. Cracoid is proximal, radius is distal. So we start with the first one which goes from the coracoid, and that is the coracobrachialis. And also, if we realize that in the diagram of the brachial plexus, that the musculocutaneous nerve comes earlier than the radian nerve, that will be a good hint to help you in the innervation. So the more proximal, the muscle in this group, the more likely the muscular cutaneous will innervate it. The cracobrachialis, the origin is from the cracoid tip. You got to realize there are a couple of muscles in this area also. The cracobrachialis and the short head of the biceps have a conjoined tendon that originate from the cracoid, and next to them is the pectoralis minor. In the vicinity of this area, there are the CC ligaments, conoid and trapezoid. Where the cracobrachialis inserts, it inserts in the middle third of the medial border of the humeral diaphysis. What is the function? It flexes and adducts the arm. Because it is a proximal muscle, the first one out of the three muscles, and because the muscular cutaneous arises before the radial nerve, then this muscle innervation has to come from the muscular cutaneous nerve. So what is unique about the coracobrachialis? The way you think about it, the coracobrachialis comes from the coracoid. The muscular cutaneous nerve is close to the coracobrachialis. It pierces the coracobrachialis about 3 to 8 cm distal to the coracoid, and it gives a branch to the coracobrachialis then it runs between the biceps and the brachialis on the anterior compartment of the arm. So that nerve is close to approaches on the anterior shoulder, especially when you retract the conjoined tendon. And the problem with this is you may not be able to measure the deficit except the decreased sensation on the lateral antibrachial cutaneous nerve because this is the terminal branch and will give sensation to the forearm. It is the same nerve that when you do distal biceps repair, you could injure. So when you do anterior shoulder surgery, you need to be very careful when you retract the conjoint tendon because of the muscular cutaneous nerve. In the second muscle is the brachialis muscle, the origin from the distal half of the anterior aspect of the humerus. The insertion is the coronoid process and tuberosity of the ulna. Function, it is a major elbow flexor. It flexes the forearm in all positions. And because it is from the humerus and not from the coracoid and not from the radius, it's just right in the humerus, in the middle.
So guess which nerve will be supplying this muscle? It's going to be the musculocutaneous and the radian nerve. So the thing that is specific about this muscle is it has a dual innervation. In addition to the dual innervation, you split this brachialis anteriorly to approach the humeral shaft and you try to be in between the innervation so you don't damage one part versus the other. Then the last muscle is the brachioradialis muscle. The origin, the proximal two-thirds of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Where does it insert? It inserts in the lateral aspect of the solid process of the radius. So because it is a distal muscle, you will assume that the radial nerve should supply it. And actually, the radial nerve supply this muscle. The function is a strong elbow flexor when the forearm is in a neutral position. So have you realized all these three muscles flexes something? So it is in the front of the shoulder or in the front of the elbow, so it flexes either the shoulder or the elbow. So what is unique about the brachioradialis? The brachioradialis is supplied by the radial nerve. We can approach the radial nerve between the brachialis and the brachioradialis muscles. The first branch of the radial nerve go to the brachioradialis. It is the first muscle you test for recovery after radial nerve palsy. You will test the muscle by the EMG. So not only it, the muscle is innervated by the radial nerve, it is the one you test it first for radial nerve recovery. And the superficial sensory branch of the radial nerve run distally in the forearm, but it runs underneath the brachioradialis and will be lateral to the radial artery. So when you expose the anterior shaft of the radius, you can injure that nerve. This nerve also is involved in Wartenberg syndrome, compression of the superficial radial sensory nerve. Thank you very much. I hope I was helpful to you. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.